Now, the 2023 ESCOM Expo International Science Fair took place last week. It brought together the brightest young scientists from across South Africa and a number of other countries around the world. Over 23 bursaries were awarded, with some of the winners also getting some cash prizes. Well, let's discuss this more about the fair. I'm joined by the Expo Academic Director, Dr. Krishni Naidu, and with her... Inside here in our studios is the 2023 top senior scientist, Likita Chundru, from Bryanston High School here in Johannesburg. She's from the Blue Flame, as they say, at Bryanston High. You'll see her just now on your screens. Congratulations, Likita. Thank you, sir. Well done. You know, I'm feeling a little bit intimidated <laughs> sitting next to one of the youngest, brightest scientists here. Dr. Naidu, welcome as well. Thank so you. how did this fair go last year, last week? Oh, it was excellent. Um, it was a celebration of a year's long hard work by our young scientists and uh, what we do is we provide the platform for them to compete and we uh, reward their hard work and we, they come from all over the country they come from all over the country um, from all nine provinces and we've had uh, representation from African countries and overseas as well. So it was quite an international science Were, were there any surprises for you? I mean, you, you've done this expo for some time yes. now. It's an annual event. Uh -huh. uh, did you see any, any new things? Were there any surprises? Yeah, well, one of the surprises was that we see such an uptake in the computer sciences. So more of our young learners are now exposing themselves and coming up with solutions to problems in the computer sciences which is excellent and which is the way we should be going yeah Likita, congratulations what grade are you in i'm in grade 11. grade 11 and yes. you are already crowned <laughs> the top senior scientist at this fair how do you feel i'm very excited <laughs> i only got the award last week friday so i lost track of days i'm still at school i'm still thinking about it because i wasn't expecting it definitely not so mm. i was very excited why were you not expecting it um it's just that there was, so, there was so much competition, right? Okay. And it's from 37 regions and getting selected to ISF, it's not an easy thing. I've been doing the fair since grade eight. So I know that to get So this to was ISF, not your first participation? No, it's not. I've been doing it since grade eight. Mm. So I know that it takes so much hard work to get to ISF and the competition there is so tough that there are so many awards and everything, but to get an award, like a prestigious and special awards, it's actually quite hard. So what was your area? What um, did you... I did a project in the agricultural sciences sector. Are you a farmer? Um, yes, you can say that. <laughs> I actually do a lot of farming you, at home. You do a lot of gardening and <laughs> yes, stuff. Yes, so yes. What, what, what did you focus on particularly? So what my focus was, um, I did research, right? And in my research, I discovered that a lot of farmers are dying and people who consume crops are also dying, like the people because of the chemicals that are used, such as pesticides, fertilizers, when crops are grown. And farmers need to do this in order to reach like a supply and demand in the market, right? So when they do that, they have to, it's like a must, they have to use chemicals in order to increase production. And this is actually very harmful for the farmer's health and for the people who are consuming it. And the environment. Yes, definitely. And also the cost effectiveness, the production of yield is less than the expenses. So, so did you create something to help? <laughs> um, not really. So I used a bacteria called rhizobium, which grows in the roots of legume plants. And what I did was I took this bacteria from legume plants. Legume plants are like beans, peas, and other plants. And I used this bacteria to increase production in non-legume plants, wow. such as staple crops, such as maize, rice. Because I, I, I must ask, what, how did you come up with this idea? Um, so... I actually didn't know what to do when it came, when it came time to the regions. Want. And I was like, why not take my hobby, because I love doing gardening a lot. So I was like, why not take my hobby to a scientific level? And why can't I test it? So that's how I came up with the idea. And as I was doing into research, like okay. I was going into it and eventually. Beautiful. Two of my youngest kids, I've got four kids, two of my youngest kids went to the Blue Flame. Yes. They went to Bryanston High. <laughs> One of them even went to Bryanston Primary oh, uh, wow. before. And they currently I have a great nephew who's in metric Bryanston. Oh, it's going to wow. be writing <laughs> soon there. So it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. They, they produce scientists as well. <laughs> now we know. So what did she actually win? Can you break it down for us? Well, she won several prizes. Um, Am I allowed to say it out yeah, aloud? Can say it. <laughs> the grand prize was as the top senior scientist uh, with 75,000 rands cash. Wow. She's won uh, the Mary Nodia Award for 5,000 rands. Um, 
Lukita. Uh, <laughs> I won the gold award, the gold medal and a cash prize. Wonderful. And then the category award, which is a trophy and a cash prize. Which uh, is the highest in that category beautiful. that she participated in. Yeah, yeah so, so, so this is going to open doors, I'm hoping. Yeah, and, and, and are you clear what you want to become? I mean, you're in grade 11. Yes, yes, and sometimes definitely. many grade 12s don't even know what they want to yeah. do after they pass matric. But <laughs> yes. do you have any idea at this early stage? So definitely I am doing some research. I was looking at engineering, medicine, even agriculture. So I'm still not at that stage. And, mm. But I feel like I will discover myself soon because mm. I have so much support from my peers and teachers at Bryanston. And your parents. They are in yes. the studio here. We can't yeah. show them on camera mm. now. But I met your parents just <laughs> off air quickly, and I'm sure they've been very supportive. They must be very proud of you. Yeah, definitely. Everybody's just so proud of me, and also in school, I receive a lot mm -hmm. of support. Did so. your parents always encourage you to do science, technology yes. type of subjects, mathematics? Yes, definitely. Since primary school, okay. I always had that urge, and they encouraged it. Yeah, that's yeah. what the experts are hoping to achieve, yes. isn't it, over time in the country, to promote STEM, STEM subjects? Absolutely. Uh, STEM subjects, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and innovation. Oh, you keep on adding. Yes, we keep adding. <laughs> <laughs> STEMI now. Okay? Yes, it's STEMI. So what we do is that we raise awareness, we identify and nurture talent, like Lakita, and we provide a platform for them to compete. But before that, most of the work is done in the development stages, where we train, we expose them to research methods, and our methodology is inquiry-based learning, so we teach children how to solve problems. Okay, so b before the expo, the stuff that happens leading yes. up to it, yes. that you as organizers uh, do with the, with the students who are in, in high school? Yes, so what we do is that we expose them to uh, research methodologies, um, how to do engineering projects and how to innovate. So we have lots of training workshops, not only for the learners, but for the teachers as well for the judges that who judge the learners so there's a lot of development work before the actual science and phase. do you work well with the department of basic education absolutely they support us um, we from right up uh, department of basic education at the dg level uh, we are supporting the curriculum because we support the caps curriculum and we are co-curricular um, okay, what would you say to a parent who might be watching now, Dr. Naidu, and they want to encourage their child to be in the STEMI stream of subjects? Well, what they must do is encourage their learners, encourage their children to participate. Now, when you participate, you don't always win. But that is a learning experience, and that's where it all starts. Like Lakita said, you know, she's been participating from grade eight. Okay. Um, so what happens is that when you participate at these science fairs, you actually learn from your peers you develop. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a number of resources that are freely available on our website, mm -hmm. uh, which parents, teachers and learners can access. Oh, that's great. Uh, I didn't plan this, but it just mm -hmm. came to mind. Now, Likita, look into camera one, there, sure. I, or camera two, but they'll, they'll zoom mm -hmm. in on you. Yes. I want you to give a shout out to your colleagues at, uh, at Bryanston. Bryanston High School, a great level. Just say whatever comes to mind into camera there. So, hi guys. Finally, I am on camera, 11D. So, I'm here and definitely I have all your support. I know that. My teachers, my teachers are watching, Mr. Kanipin, Ms. Cook. Definitely, please, I really thank you guys, Ms. Lester, who helped me with the Science Expo. So, definitely, thank you guys. Just give you a high five. <laughs> well done. All the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is, of course, the top senior scientist for 2023, Likita Chundru from Bryan Center High School in Johannesburg. And she was joined here by the academic director of the ESCOM Expo Science Fair that finished uh, last week, Dr. Krishni Naidu.